back from the JLAM bio here with another exciting chemistry video. Yes, it is video 2-1. We are already in unit 2. We are practically done with the school year. And it's August 12th. So, off to a really good start. In this video, we're going to focus on quite a few things. Uh, stuff that we've talked about quite a bit in Chem 1. So, we are going to focus on accuracy, precision, significant figures, and scientific notation. So by the end of this video, you should be able to measure appropriately in science class. You should also be able to differentiate between accuracy and precision and calculate using correct significant figures and use scientific notation appropriately. We don't have nearly as many vocabulary terms as the previous video, but still nonetheless, we have measurement, precision, accuracy, significant figures, and scientific notation. So when we make measurements in science class, they're never exact. We can never really get a true exact measurement. All instruments have some degree of uncertainty. It just depends on the instrument that you're using. If you take a look to the right here, we have two different rulers. One measures to the tenths place and one measures to the ones place. So obviously the one at the bottom has a little more uncertainty than the one at the top because it doesn't measure in near as much detail as the one at the top does. Now, the standard rule of chemistry is that we always estimate one digit beyond what we can most accurately measure. So looking at the bottom right, we have a number or a line that is in between two and three. So we estimate that last digit based on where it's located between two and three. So I'm gonna estimate that it's about 2.5. At the very top, you also have another line that's there. And the most accurately we can measure utilizing that device is to the tenths place. So we go one beyond what we can most accurately measure and estimate that hundredths place digit. So as a result, we get 2.55. The key here to remember is that scientific measurements are not exact and you always measure one digit beyond what you can most accurately measure. You estimate that last digit. Now, when we talk about making measurements, we look at several different things. We're gonna focus on accuracy and precision. Multiple measurements are necessary for good data. We don't just take one data point, we take multiple data points. Accuracy is how close those measurements are to the true value. So the closer you are to what you actually should get, that means that you're accurate. Precision is how close the measurements are to each other. So if we take a look at the examples on the right here, the one on the left hand side has high accuracy and high precision. They're close to the center of the target and they're close to each other. The second one has high precision and low accuracy because they're close to each other but not close to the center target. The third one has relatively high accuracy but low precision. The points are all over the board but they're certainly surrounding or close to the actual measurement. And then the final one is low accuracy and low precision which these, you know, it's a really bad football player just, you know, spreading balls all over the field. So. So when we talk about using significant figures in science class, the way that the numbers are written actually determines how accurate the number is. So there are four key rules for significant figures in science class and determining significant figures when we look at a number. The first is that all non-zero digits are significant. 34 liters would have two significant figures, the three and the four. Zero digits between non-zero digits are significant. So 101 would have three significant figures, the one, the zero, and the one. Leading zeros are never significant. Now these leading zeros always occur before the number, not necessarily the decimal point. So 0 0.00012 milliliters only has two significant figures. The zeros in the front of that number are not significant. Reason being is that you can write that as 1.2 times 10 to the negative fourth in scientific notation. And then lastly, trailing zeros are significant if there is a decimal point. So one example here I gave you is 100 liters with no decimal point only has one significant figure. The trailing zeros are not significant because there is no decimal point. However, if we place a decimal at the end of 100, then that becomes three significant figures. Reason being is that 100 without the decimal point is kind of a, an estimation. It's somewhere near 100. But 100 with a decimal point says that that number is exactly 100. No more, no less. So let's get some practice and determine the number of significant figures in the following. First one is 34.0 liters, so we know that the three and the four are significant. That zero is significant as well because there's a decimal point between the four and the zero, so this has three significant figures. 202 grams has two non-zero digits. There's a zero between them. That one's significant as well, so we have three. 1.0040, there are trailing zeros and zeros in between non-zero digits. 
but all of these are significant so that's five and then we also have point zero zero two three zero leading zeros are never significant so the only ones that are significant are the last three so this has three significant figures pretty straightforward let's move on so numbers that are really large or small can be written in scientific notation. Now, you've probably learned about this in either a previous math or chemistry class. The formula for this is a times 10 to the x power, where a is a number between 1.0 and 9.9, .9, and x is the number of digits the decimal place moves to get the number a. So we're going to be rearranging some numbers here in order to get this into scientific notation. And basically what you do, it's pretty straightforward. Take the number given and move the decimal place to the left or right to get the number between 1.0 and 9.9. .9. The number of places you move the decimal is the exponent. So if you move the decimal place to the left, it is a positive number. And if you move it to the right, it is a negative number. So for example, 43,200 milligrams becomes 4.32 times 10 to the fourth milligrams. 0 0.0000325 kilograms, I don't know why they didn't just put that in grams, becomes 3.25 times 10 to the negative fifth. We move that decimal place to the right five spots to get the number between 1 and 0 0.0 and 9.99. And then we, since we moved it over five spots to the right, the exponent is to the negative fifth. So let's do some practice problems. Convert the following into scientific notation. So we have 345 grams. Well, the decimal place would be right there. So we're going to move it over until we get a number between 1.0 and 9.9. .9. So 1, 2. So now that number is 3.45. We moved it over to the left, so it's a positive value, and we moved it two spots. So it's times 10 to the second grams. One down here on the bottom, move that decimal place over. 1, 2, 3, 4. We moved it to the right four spots this time. So this number is 2.19 times 10. And we moved it over four spots, so it's the negative four centigrams. The opposite side here, we can convert the following using standard numbers. So 2.19 times 10 to the seventh, we've got to make the conversion here. So two, we move the decimal place over one spot, two spot, okay, and the rest we just fill with zeros until we get to the end. So we did one spot, two spot, three, four, five, six, seven. So the number we get. 21,900,000. You can always go back and double check this as well. If we want to get this back into scientific notation, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We know we move it over 7 spots. 2.19 times 10 to the 7th. It matches up. Same thing here. 5.4 times 10 to the negative second. So we're going to start here. Decimal place is originally there. We're going to move the opposite direction this time. So we're going to go 1, add a 0, 2. So my number is 0 0.054. Okay, and again, you can double check that. Negative second, so we move the decimal place one, two spots. Negative second, we're in good shape. Okay? It is important in chemistry to be able to perform functions with significant figures. Now, we won't be doing a lot of adding and subtracting, but it is important to know that when we add and subtract, we use the decimal place of least accuracy. Okay, so basically, I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. When multiplying or dividing, we use the least number of significant figures in the problem. And when you do dimensional analysis, you use the same sig figs that you start with. You'll see what I mean when we work through some practice problems in just a moment. So 2.45 grams plus 3.7 grams. Well, we do some arithmetic here, pretty straightforward. And our answer, when we do our math, is 6.24. Now, when adding or subtracting, we go to the decimal place with the least amount of accuracy. Here. We go two digits beyond the decimal. Here we go just one. So we can only go a maximum of one digit. This is the one that has the least amount of accuracy with it. So when we record this, we say it is 6.2 grams. Okay. We're going to divide here. So we're going to take 15.4 meters, and we are going to divide that by 3.218 seconds. And what we get, 4.78 five, six, I'll round that. That's a five, by the way. Um, unit would be meters over second. And then when we multiply or divide, remember we use the smallest number of significant figures. So here we have three, and here we have four. So my answer needs to have three. So I go one, two, three. That number's gonna round up, so we're gonna have 4.79 meters per second.
Okay? Again, pretty simple stuff. When dealing with functions with scientific notation, there are a couple simple rules that we need to follow as well. When adding or subtracting, the exponents need to be the same. We perform the operation, so whether we add or subtract, and then adjust the number to get back between 1 and 10 and change the exponent accordingly. So we make some adjustments, and if we need to go back and make some more, we do the same thing. In multiplying and dividing, we perform the operation, we multiply or divide, and then add the exponents if multiplying, or subtract the exponents if dividing. We then adjust the number to get back between 1 and 10 and change the exponent accordingly. So just make sure we follow these rules and we'll have no problems whatsoever. So with this first problem, we start off with 4.3 times 10 to the 5th grams, and we are adding 2.3 times 10 to the 4th grams. Well, remember, the key thing here is that our exponents need to be the same in order to perform addition or subtraction operations. So we either need to change 1 to the 4th or 1 to the 5th. I'm going to go ahead and change 2.3 times 10 to the 4th grams to the 5th exponent. In order to do that, we need to move the decimal place to the left one spot. So when we add this, it's actually going to be a little bit different. So when we add this, we're going to add 0.23 times 10 to the 5th. Okay. And now we should be able to add that number. So 4.3 plus 0.23, 4.5. 3 times 10 to the 5th, and that's going to be grams. Now that unit is still, uh, the number here is still in between 1 and 10, or 1 and 9.9, .9, so we're in good shape there. Our degrees of uncertainty, though, only the 10th digit, so we get rid of that last one there. Okay, So most accurately I can go is five point, or 4.5 times 10 to the 5th grams. Same thing down here at the bottom with scientific notation. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract our exponents because we are dividing. So we're going to subtract our exponents. So 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Our unit's going to be meters per second. And now we just follow the function of the operation. We take 3.45 and we are going to divide 1.22. And what we get is 2.83 times 10 to the negative second. Oh, much better. Okay, The reason we have three digits here is because there are three significant figures in our problem. All right, guys, I know we did a lot of problems there, but hopefully by the end of this video, you are able to measure appropriately in science class, differentiate between accuracy and precision, and calculate using correct significant figures and use scientific notation appropriately. This is Jay Lambio signing out. Have a great day, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.